experience uh, leading this project. We had this project since 2014, so we had a couple of years of, of experience and uh, a couple of lessons learned. So let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, before we start talking about Wikipedia in residence, uh, I will tell you a little bit more about our chapter. Uh, we, were, we were founded at 2005, so like 18 years ago, which is a big number and we are legal to, to drink as an organization, as a chapter. But besides that, we have a three program that we are running. One is GLAM, the second one is ZADU, and the third one is diversity and community program. The fun fact about ADU program, um, the first ADU program ever founded was by Wikimedia Serbia. So a little fun fact about that. We were not first at GLAM, but we are trying our best to be good. Uh, we are located in Belgrade, Serbia. We have five staff members and seven board members. We are trying to decentralize our activity. Is it, it is very common to have like glam activities only in the capital of the city, so we are uh, capital of the country. So we are really trying to decentralize and to help cultural institutions um, that are not being capital of Serbia. As I said, we, we have this for uh, at the end of my parts of the slides, we had 41 Wikipedia. Say hello, we want to hire someone who will be working like full time at your, let's say, museum to digitize, to write articles about you, to post your content to Wikimedia Commons to uh, teach your employees about Creative Commons, about free knowledge, about licensing, about all of that. It was really not easy job to do. So uh, even though we are non-governmental, even though we are trying to have like a free knowledge motivation and everything, we still uh, needed to think about like some kind of business and corporate way. We needed to show why the cultural institution actually need us, even though we need them as well. So we wanted to show why It is not easy to have a cooperation in institutional culture, as we heard throughout the sessions we had these days. It is challenging. Sometimes they have a lack of resources, so you need to make sure that you will have resources they need, that you will um, be able to provide maybe, maybe a Also, um, employees or staff in culture that we have to be in. In Serbia, is that we have a little bit kind of different strategy than maybe the rest of the Wikimedians in residence, I'm not sure. But we are trying to make this process a little bit shorter, but in more institutions. So, our month long Wikipedia in residence, but we are trying to have them in more institutions for, so let's say at least four per year. Um, sometimes, in like the other chapters and the other cities, they have a year, two year long, or three year long. And we, all from our example, is for them to see that 
that stealing for from them and that online to a little bit fall in love with Wikimedia movement and the idea of free knowledge that we all uh, really love here. So we are starting like with two months it's happening in our project that maybe two months is not long enough to do all the stuff we needed to do in that institutional culture. So we repeat the project maybe a year or two after that. Or maybe we educate someone from their uh, institution to uh, do a part of that activities by themselves. So what are the responsibilities Digitizing content and uploading it. And we have like um, a cooperation with let's say museum in one city, we are trying to cover all the culture and all the important info uh, about that city, about their history, about their culture. So we are just trying like, to close the story, at least for now, on Wiki projects about that region, about that city. We are doing stuff on Wikimedia Commons and we involved Wikidata as well. We have workshops for employees, as I said, because we are trying to have that sustainable relationship with institutions of culture so they are able to edit Wikimedia projects by themselves. And of course, Wikimedia New Residence is a link between us as, as like a Wikimedia Serbia and the institution. So that person who works there as a Wikimedia New Residence is the person who actually sees all the struggle and all the needs maybe they have and they can navigate um, like between our mis mission as Wikimedia movement and their mission as cultural institution. So what are the steps in making successful cooperation? Uh, first, we do a selection of cultural institutions. As I said, decentralization is really important at at least our chapter. We are trying to have as many activities outside of the capital of Serbia as we can. Um, the one thing that was really helpful for, for us is that we got the support of Ministry of Culture of Serbia for this project. And part of this project is funded actually by Ministry of Culture. So that was really a big step for us. And it helped us a lot to show to cultural institutions that, okay, it is worthy, even though that you haven't heard about us, we have the support of Ministry of Culture. So it's much easier to approach them when you have that kind of, let's say, validation of the ministry of some government institution that you are worthy and that your mission is really good enough for them as well. So that was really something that is making much more easier for us to make more cooperations and to approach institutions to have like a support of ministry. So as I said, we are trying to decentralize our activities and to have them in as many cities in Serbia as we have. Selection of Wikipedia in residence. Who are those people actually who are working this? Um, we, and as all of you have, I'm sure you have, like the base of people who are working with you, base of volunteers, base of um, editors. So we are always trying to find like a perfect person for that job from our surrounding. If that was like an amazing Wikipedia editor, or if that was um, a person who showed that has some great skills at, uh, like, let's say, at the Wiki Camp or something like that. So we are trying to encourage them to be Wikipedian in residence and to maybe get involved a little bit more. So that's some kind of not say award, but as to say thank you for giving such a, an like really a great effort in um, doing activities in us. So we are always trying to find that person in our circle. If that doesn't work, sometimes maybe we do not have someone in some city in Serbia, we will ask the institution of culture. Like maybe do you have a person who worked with you or some student that was on some kind of internship at your cultural institution? And most of the time it is, it works. 
to be honest. Like I had a, um, an example a few months ago, they gave an amazing person that became a Wikipedia editor by after that, but uh, she, she wasn't involved in any Wikimedia projects before. Uh, if that doesn't work, we just call an op uh, we have an open call for Wikimedia in residence. But I have been leading this project for four years. That didn't happen. So most of the time, those people are somewhere, um, someone that we already know. And that is the end. After that, we start. But we have to prepare the project, of course. And I will tell you a little bit more about that in the next slide. Uh, so what are the tips and tricks in preparation of the project? I will be fast. So you have to make a Wikipedia page. Everything has to be online. Everything has to be as transparent as it can. Because when you approach the cultural institution for the first time, they are a little bit afraid, like, what will you be doing? And when we say that everything is online, that, that you can see what we are doing at any time of the day or the night you want, they get a little bit more comfortable with that. So we have like a project page on Serbian Wikipedia about that. We have project pages on Meta as well, on English. Uh, so we list all the articles written, improved, illustrated. We have like a link to, to category in Wikimedia Commons. So everything is super transparent on that Wikipedia page. Content. No matter how many times you tell the institution of culture to prepare the content, so when the project starts, we can start from the day number one. It almost never happens, to be honest. But um, you try to communicate with the institution of culture to prepare the content your Wikimedia in residence will be working with. To prepare like maybe some database of digitized contents if they have. If not, to prepare content that they need to be digitized. To prepare the resources for writing articles. To prepare anything that we can start working with. And when the, that person starts working at this project, it's much easier because they get two resources by themselves. Equipment, as I said, not many cultural institutions are well, um, they have well equi equipment. So make sure that you have like an additional laptop that you can provide maybe to that Wikipedia in residence to write those articles on it. Digitization, we teach them also about digitization, about creative commons, about licensing, about everything. It is not that good uh, thing that not many, uh, I mean, not, not many, but some institutions of culture are still not aware of all the licensing possible and free content and free knowledge. We also have workshops around Wikimedia projects like Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons, and how they can use them, and Creative Commons, as I said. And by workshops, we are trying really to, to uh, make this project sustainable. And at the end, we write reports. We write weekly reports with Wikimedians in residence to see what is going on, what was good, what was not good. And we are encouraging them to write every single issue that they have encountered so we can be better, we can improve. And please make sure to achieve that relationship with your Wikipedians in residence that uh, you are standing behind them, that you will protect them if something, some conflict, some issue appears, that they are not alone, that they are not fighting the battle with, with institutional culture if some trouble appears, but you are behind them. So just make sure that um, they have that perspective that you, you will be there for, for them and please encourage them to tell you about the negative stuff that are sometimes maybe happening. Uh, these are some of our results. As I said, we had 41 projects so far, uh, almost like 2,000 um, new articles, 2,600 improved and illustrated, 14, almost 15,000 um, files in Wikimedia Commons, and almost 200 books. So these are results only from Wikimedian in residence and we had like 41 projects, which is really a big number, at least for us. So uh, we, we had faced many situations, but nothing that me or you as Wikimedians who would maybe lead this project cannot win. Next. And that was it from me. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you will enjoy the, um, I hope you have enjoyed my session and I'm looking forward to questions later. Thank you.
Uh, thank you very much, Gorana and uh, Federico. And thank you very much for coming for our presentation. Uh, my name is Alex Chibombo Ekanya. And uh, together with Goran and Federico, we are the not so rare mythical creatures, otherwise known as Wikimedians in residence. And I would like to share with you my experiences in a regional context as a Wikimedian in residence. And this was necessitated by the fact that um, no residences are the same, and people tend, us, tend to see us as a homogeneous entity till we have to explain the specific work that we have done with unique institutions. So I'm going to share with you my experiences with an organization known as AFLIA and what necessitated the residency. And these are experiences that were gained or just lived in the period August 2020 up till September 2023. So this is the culmination of three months work. So we do have an organization in Africa. It's an umbrella body. It's known as AFLIA. AFLIA is an acronym for that. And it was, um, the inception was in 2013, a few years after the birth of uh, many of the Wikimedia projects. And because it's an umbrella organization, it has at least 212 organizational members, and they have at least 1,000 information workers as part of the body of subscribers. And one of the things that AFLIA offers to the people that subscribe to it is access to continuous professional development, things that their places of work could not otherwise bring to them, and networking, op uh, partner, networking opportunities with strategic partners. So in this case, I like to think the Wikimedia Foundation is a strategic partner. So the vision and the mission are right there. And if you look at them closely, they are not exactly the vision and the mission of the Wikimedia Foundation, but somewhere in there, there's an intersection of needs and the work that we do. So with access to this kind of network, for the longest time in Africa as Wikimedians, we could not engage librarians, leave alone the fact that there was always that antagonistic relationship, you know? Um, you're asking us to think about giving th things free of charge, but this is not when we are at work. I know we are at work when we are giving out information, but this goes um, against our ethos. Like We could not recruit them. There was skepticism, there was cynicism, and we just could not get to them. And when AFLIA came in, it was able to rally its membership to then necessitate uh, the need for a Wikimedia in residence. And these are some of the factors that necessitated this relationship. AFLIA had a network. The Wikimedia Foundation needed to get to this network, and there was no person to act as a bridge, you know? Tell them that this is what is going on in this sector. Hey, Wikimedia Foundation, this is how we need to approach this population. So we needed to create a relationship with a mission-aligned partner, that is AFLIA, you know, as librarians. I will use the word librarians, but actually I mean all information workers. It's just that I trained as once. So I tend to think everyone is. So we are a mission-aligned partner. And then it's a thematic community. It's a community of practice. So we need to promote continuous learning. And this residency came in at a time when the pandemic was, was taking root, was taking shape, and very many people either did not have anything to do or they were bored, or even after the pandemic, they were forced to learn some other things to be able to survive on the job. And then the antagonistic relationship, we needed to foster an understanding of the relationship between mission-aligned partners and the work within the Wikimedia projects, because not every Wikimedia project belongs to GLAM. And then to foster that also, we needed to get contextualized learning resources. I can tell you from experience, the resource I use to teach my community on a Saturday morning is not the resource that I use to teach a librarian on a Tuesday afternoon. And then also we did a pre-survey before that and uh, 
out of 480 librarians that were polled, at least 68% claimed that they did not know that there was a Wikimedia community in their community and we needed to foster this sort of community growth being led by librarians in their communities. But also because GLAM is the discussion right now, the relevance to, uh, to knowledge and with all the evolution that we have seen in this sector, we had never really had a discussion on the state of GLAM in Africa. So all the responses that we were seeing, all the initiatives that we were seeing were either a duplication of efforts or they were just something responsive. It's not long term. Like this has come up and we need to react to it, but there's no continuity beyond that reaction. Next slide. So these are the two projects that were funded by the Wikimedia Foundation. The first one happened between 2020 and 2021. The first one was the Wikipedia project for African librarians and our theme was liberating knowledge, entering into people's minds in a positive way, obviously, and then asking them to critically think what Wikipedia is and what resources do they have that they can contribute that are unique to them, that if it were not for them, they would not be appearing on Wikipedia. And then in September of 2022, uh, AFLIA received another grant to train African librarians through Wikidata because very many people had talked about structured data, linked data, but nobody was talking about Wiki, uh, Wikidata and the kind of potential that it held for the network. So these were the two uh, projects under the residency that I was privileged to. Under. So in a nutshell, this is what happened. We developed um, curriculums for teaching information workers. They were bilingual. One curriculum was for Wikidata. It was, I think, five modules spread over six weeks. And Portuguese, but unfortunately, Lusophone speakers did not sign up for the course. And these curriculums were for training on Wikipedia and Wikidata. And uh, as a result of that, uh, we trained a number of librarians from at least 40 countries in Africa. And in the countries where there was existing Wikimedia groups, you will see that there's, there's some activity among the Wikimedia projects and it is being led by individuals that studied under that course. As I speak, we have at least 200 information workers on the continent. They have been trained on how to engage with and contribute to Wikipedia and Wikidata. But one of the key metrics was also the new and unique content. And these are just some of the numbers. These are available on the dashboard. These are, this is the sanitized version of the numbers. So we trained on French Wikipedia and English Wikipedia as well as Wikidata. We developed two curriculums. They are available on the Wikipedia, sorry, on the AFIA website. And uh, for Wikipedia, we trained at least 469 By saying we trained them, these are actually the individuals that completed the course and received the course completion certificate. And then in the case Both in terms of content as 
well as individuals, but I'm also proud to say that now librarians are taking the lead in community rules, especially in countries where there are no communities. I invite you to look at the country of Gambia, uh, South Sudan, uh, Kenya also. Burkina uh, Faso, where the countries are so many, I'll be listening if I say them all. But thank you very much for your time. And I'd like to hand over to Federico. Well, first of all, I want to say thanks to everyone for coming all the way here to the video. We have been a lot of effort in this conference in the past. So we want to be on this one. Uh, okay, as you can see there, it is a Three cases of Flam uh, Fellowship, let's say, very well. We got some of the modalities about it. I mean, the, the group user here in, in Uruguay uh, is not chapter, but all the group users. So this year they have this plan to uh, grow um, to uh, partnership. So we, uh, that's how I came to, to be a developer. And we also have that. Is, uh, data, data as well. So we have several projects on, on both sides. And I think that will be here, so I'll have to happen. Um, so we're not going to keep it um, So um, there were some particularities. So the first one is that uh, me as a Canada Union, so I wasn't in the Union for the year. My position was to start in March and, and now in December, so it was like some uh, sort of testing of the land in the country. Um, and also the institutions that were part of it were already in uh, some sort of collaboration previous to the actual land fellowship. So the first step to actually original institutions was something I had to do even though afterwards uh, there was a need to the process that was able to, to happen. Um, so my approach was to basically uh, review some of these studies before I started. Um, interviewing community reference, which was very interesting. Um, especially uh, regarding the, the third one, the finding is capital outcomes. So I, I come from the IT management uh, side of the, uh, of the world. So my third question was, anyone knowing it was regarding alcohol, uh, basically <laughs> what I asked uh, Evelyn and then this reference I interviewed was, uh, okay, so what's an alcohol uh, here in, in this planet? Um, what's, uh, <coughs> what's actually um, our result that I can show you afterwards? I said, okay, this fellowship is a success because I was able to do this and this. Um, so the first couple of uh, persons that we got to interview, we told them, okay, uh, try to forget about that, try not to think about outcomes uh, or success, or just, um, just try to establish an, uh, an effective uh, relationship with the uh, actual communities that are going to be part of this. <coughs> and, and then I had a third interview, which was kind of particular because um, they were going to do it. To maybe you can just translate content from the English Wikipedia to what you can call it. Um, uh, you know, whatever you can want to call it. Perdón, ¿se puede subir un poco? El micrófono. Ahí, yo te pongo acá. Bien. Bien. Bien, ok. Uh, I don't know where I lost you guys, but uh, I'm going back to the album part. So, albums. Definition was my first approach, which I kind of left it uh, aside after this person uh, to um, use the, the knowledge that you already have on the YouTube media and transport them to uh, the Spanish one. Um, so that leads me to why we exist. I think my colleagues already started and think it was an idea of why it's important to have and collaboration, especially the collaborations on the entire world uh, countries and in the global south. Um, it's why 
precisely because uh, that's a crucial uh, of, of tools. Uh, the uh, the knowledge. Uh, you know, one question that is not in the machine in the day. I know that comes from the um, So that's what's something that the institutions in your way knows. Uh, the community is not quite aware, and um, it's not only the, the government uh, English speaking community, it's also that happens within the Spanish speaking community, and it's something that can be closed. Uh, we're going to come back to that when we get to the second institution that we work. Uh, okay, so these were the, the first three institutions, and this collaboration with all three of them already kind of started. Uh, this year, we already uh, reached out them. And the first one was the Museum of Science Natural, which is the Natural History Museum of the Way. The second one is the Museum of the Grape uh, and Wine, which is uh, in Canelones, which is a uh, some piece of the from the area. And the third one is an ongoing, and uh, we also had some communications with that one, uh, uh, which is the Center for the Piano of the Year. So, first one was the Museum. And like I said, um, we had uh, a couple of conversations we had now with Kavanka and Salina here with us today from the museum. Um, we had some conversations we were trying to refine uh, in the small period of time that we, we had to actually implement the, the fellowship, which was uh, three months. What was possible, of course, a uh, network history museum is huge. Uh, you can have uh, a multi amount of approaches that you can uh, do with it. Uh, so, we, like I'm still new and I was even newer uh, when we started with them, um, we decided to go with uh, something that we don't know uh, maybe we were able to manage, which was a very content that we identified as missing on the Spanish Wikipedia and on all the Wikipedia. Now we get bones for it, we get bones. So they can be related for 10,000 images for us to download, which was uh, uh, a great success for me, 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 And for those images, we were like, uh, we had like a regular discussion of what was able to, to be in a global uh, property. Um, there was a lot of content, and some of that was apt to be uploaded, some uh, was uh, needed to be like reviewed. Uh, we ended up uh, like uploading around 500 images um, from particular species that were missing from uh, from commons, um, or were like represented only from uh, institutions from the government. Let's say they were present um, in the museums and in Europe, um, in the US. Uh, the content was uh, uploaded to the fauna, the wild fauna. Um, on the Spanish Wikipedia, on the English Wikipedia, and in Wikipedia, so that was our core approach. It was quite successful. I uploaded uh, that much of uh, my find because it was the first collaboration that we had also with the Wikipedia Catalog, uh, and with that. So we were both learning about the, the possibilities of Wikipedia, so it was a uh, super enriching uh, thing for us in particular. I think for the museum as well, uh, we didn't manage to, to do as much as we do, as much as we would like. But the, the fellowship will continue with them for next year, so I have my project that is going to be completed. Um, okay. okay, the second one was uh, a more interesting one for me because it's not a few particular things, a few more challenges. So the Museum of the Way of Union, which is the Museum of the Way of the Union, they were and still are, I think, in the process of moving from the previous meeting. That was the first of the IP regarding the uh, uh, materials and such. So, again, we had uh, a few conversations. We also had uh, people from the team from the Northern Museum. Uh, regarding also what we could do, uh, since you know, this particular situation where they were like, changing the view and what they had, how they wanted to, to change their approach to their content as well. So, we well, I'm going to start with you. the first one, who was digitizing and upload content. They have a collection of, of labels, uh, of labels, and we digitize that and we upload it. 